I am in St. George, Utah. Now, I've been here quite a few times, long ago, when I was going to college in Logan, Utah, which is way on the other side of the state, near the border of Idaho. Uh, we would come for spring break. I was going to college there. It would be 20 degrees, freezing our butts off. And we would drive down here to St. George on our way to Las Vegas and hang out here for a bit. And it was such a beautiful small town. But that was 40 years ago. Uh, this is the first time in 40 years that I've been here. Imagine my surprise when I arrived at a huge, well, maybe not huge, but a very large metropolis. I'm like, what? So I looked up the census numbers. Yeah, in 1980, we would come here, 81, 82. In 1980, there were only 13, 14,000 people here. Today, St. George's population is 102,000. And the metro is just shy of 200,000. What? That's massive growth. So I dived in a little bit deeper. Sure enough, over the past 30 years, St. George, Utah has been among the top 10 fastest growing cities in the United States. According to the census, during the years 2000 to 2005, it was the fastest growing city in the U.S. And again, in 2021, St. George was the fastest growing city in the U.S. I mean, 13,000, that's basically a little town, to this metropolis. <laughs> but you know, it was beautiful then. Uh, it is beautiful now. It's called Utah's Dixie. Now, as a young man, I always thought it was called that because of the warm weather. You get here and it would be 70s in March. The weather here is very similar to Las Vegas, which is pretty close. So I always thought, well, Dixie South, it's because it's warm. No, they actually tried to grow cotton here when they founded the city, uh, mid-1800s. Brigham Young, who was president of the Mormon Church at the time, coined the uh, nickname and it stuck. It's still called Utah's Dixie, but they don't grow cotton. It just didn't happen. But uh, my oh my, it is still a beautiful city. Anyway, yeah, there's historic downtown right there. I'm gonna head in and take a look. We're gonna go visit. If you can see that, that is the, yeah, that is the temple, the Mormon temple here in St. George, it is actually the oldest temple in the church. Actually, the third oldest, but it is the oldest in the United States. That one was built before the one in Salt Lake City. There is a cannon there. I hope is there that I want to show you. It's awesome. But anyway. Yeah. How about that, huh? How about if I head into downtown now? Take a look around. Then I'm going to grab Nicole. We're going to eat at one of the local areas here and go to the oldest building or the oldest store that's still in operation in town. Yeah, we'll do all that. It's coming up. <laughs> that's so gorgeous. Anyway, all right. Yeah, so that's coming up next. Man, that is so awesome. That would look so good in my man cave. It would look great. See Dixie photo. See if we can see in here a little bit. Got some reflection on the window. Got a placard here. It says in the early 20s, this fine three-story building appeared on the Arrowhead Trail, 32 East Tabernacle Street. Many important services were carried out here uh, to make life in St. George easier. Anyway, uh not sure if it's open. 
but um, it's a cool old building. Anyway, I'm here in downtown St. George. Let's take a look around. Today is Labor Day. So it's a bit quiet, maybe, because of that. Even though the hotels are full, our hotel is full, <laughs> crammed with people. But anyway, it's a bit quiet here. It's 10 a.m. Uh, let's see, it's, uh, what, 75 degrees right now? 24 Celsius. It'll get up in the mid 90s though. It gets cool at night because we are in the Mojave Desert. That is where St. George is. But uh, it gets hot during the day. This is the St. George Tabernacle of the Mormon Church. Built in 1876. So it had to be one of the first structures here. already given you the population numbers. Median age is 39. That's pretty much exactly what it is in the U.S. as a whole. Gender 50-50. 81% of this town is white. 12% Hispanic. 1% is black. 1% is Asian. 1% is Native American. 1% Pacific Islander. Last 3% mixed. Median household income is $59,000 a year. That's uh, $11.35 a week. Now this right here, Judge Store. Oldest uh, business in town. I want to say 1910, 1911. It's been open continually. I'm going to bring Nicole, and uh, we'll go in there later. But I'm going to head this way to the square. Tell you some more. Uh, poverty, pretty low, 11%. Children 17 and under, 8%. Folks uh, 65 and older, it's 13%. That's the only one that's higher than the U.S. average. Is uh, older folks. Some interesting, uh, maybe a little bit different numbers. 60% of the town is married. The U.S. is 50 as a whole. 92% of the people in this town graduated high school versus 85 for the country. 78% of the people who live here describe themselves as very religious. Yeah, so uh, religion is important here. Mostly Mormons, as you can guess, but there are others. Crime pretty low. Last year, 15 incidents per 1,000 versus 23 in the U.S. Mostly property crime. 13 of those 15 per 1,000 were property crime. Two were violent. City of St. George Historic Sculpture Garden. William Carter, 1821-1896. He was a member of the Vanguard Company, the first group of saints to travel to what is now Utah in 1847. He cultivated land along the way so that crops could be planted for travelers who followed. Upon entering the Salt Lake Valley, now that's Salt Lake City, he used his plow to successfully irrigate and plow the first one half acre of ground in preparation for crops on July 23, 1847. When the pioneers first entered St. George in 1861, William took that same plow and plowed a ditch from a spring in the northeast of St. George down to where the pioneers were camping to have the water handy for use. He became known as the first plowman and irrigator of the American West. He worked on the Nauvoo and Salt Lake temples. Now this guy is Daniel D. MacArthur. You can see he's holding uh, Oh, Book of Mormon, looks like. Let's see, born 1820, died 1908. He was called in 1861 by Brigham Young to help establish a settlement in the harsh climate of southern Utah. 
All right, this is Juanita Brooks, a distinguished Utah historian. Uh, she was widowed at a young age in 1919 or 1920 at the age of 20 with an infant son. Despite that, she finished her education and became one of Utah's preeminent historians. Woodward School erected 1901. Well, let's see what the placard says. With the arrival of families in St. George, school began. A tent, slates, and a few books served students in the first central school. Later schools held in different private homes and public buildings until this permanent school was completed in 1901. They have a military war memorial here in the downtown square. It's always good to see that. You may be wondering where the name St. George came from. Well, the town is named after a LDS apostle from the late 1800s by the name of George A. Smith. Uh, what's the industry here? Tourism. Uh, St. George is a jumping off spot for the many national parks that are near here, including Zion and even Grand Canyon's not that far away. So a lot of people come here on their way to the national parks. Southern Utah is filled with some of the most amazing national parks in this country, in the world. All right, I'm here at the uh, St. George, Utah Temple, built in 1871. It is constructed with the red brick from the red clay in the area, but it's painted white. Now they had some problems building this church. Brigham Young selected this uh, location, but it turns out it was on a lot of swamp land. It's very wet here, not enough to support a building of this size. However, Brigham Young was adamant that this was the location. So uh, they decided to drain the swamp and take some of the hard red brick or hard red clay in the surrounding mountains, uh, basically pulverize it, fill in the area, you know, get something real dry and build it in, which is what they did. Now they had a problem, and that was how do they pulverize all this hard uh, red rock? Well, they found a cannon in California. The cannon had a lot of history itself. It was used by Napoleon in the siege of Moscow and when he occupied Moscow. That itself one of the most violent uh, military campaigns in history. But anyway, that cannon was used in that, in the French, uh, by the French, by Napoleon's army. Now the cannon, after he pulled out, made its way to Siberia, from there to Alaska, and from Alaska to California, where the Mormons picked it up. My understanding was that the cannon was inside here, the visitor center, but the people inside say, no, it's currently in storage. Uh, planned for a museum uh, that is under construction or in the planning stages. So, uh, that kind of sucks. I guess we're SOL on that one. That's too bad. That is an amazing artifact, that cannon. That should be in a museum for people to see. Napoleon era cannon, used by his army. I wonder if they understand the treasure that that is. I'm sure they do. Anyway, a couple more things to see. This is Brigham Young's winter home, built in 1871. Can't really blame him for having a winter home. I'm sure he uh, enjoyed coming down here in the warmth, escaped the cold weather of Salt Lake City. I am heading into a residential area up here. Look at that, falling rock. You see those signs, falling rock? Well, there's some that actually fell. 
Now, I haven't told you the median home value yet. Uh, 448000 Woo, that's up there. For the U.S., it's 282000 So, it is beautiful here, but it's going to cost you. At least in terms of buying a house. Really interesting looking homes here, though. That looks like prairie style architecture. Wow, look at this house here. I mean, they're butted right up against these uh, red hills. Isn't that something? Now, one of the things you notice, well, flags everywhere. Everybody's got flags in front of their house. But you also notice how wide the streets are. Here in uh, St. George. A complete contrast to where we just were. That being the East Coast. Where the streets are incredibly narrow. Yeah, they build them wide here. I'm actually in uh, neighborhoods in between the Temple and downtown. Check out some of these houses. Yeah, it looks nice. Some pretty old houses. They're not huge, but a lot of character to them. See that one with the detached garage and carport? That's pretty nifty, huh? Anyway, uh, you know what? I'm going to wrap this part of the video up. I'm going to go grab Nicole. And uh, we're going to check out a local restaurant. And we're going to go to that Judd's. So uh, that's coming up next. Now I've got Nicole with me. There she is trying to navigate those rocks to get on this bike trail. Uh, we're going to eat at this restaurant here. It's called Cliffside. You can see why. This is some kind of bike trail. One second of not paying attention and you're going down the side of this uh, cliff. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, here's uh, another view. Um, see the red cliffs over there? That's where I started the video. Up on one of those. Looking down into downtown right there. And then, of course, the temple, which I showed you not long ago. Let me get that. No, oh, there it is. Yeah, there's the temple I showed you just a little bit ago. There's the city laid out. Of course, the city goes way out over here on the other side of these uh, little mountains, way in the distance. It's become really big. But anyway. Did you hear what I said to you now? If what? you were a gentleman, you would have given me your hand to help me over the rocks. Well, I didn't know you were coming. I didn't think you were going to try it. Anyway, all right, so we're going to head up into this Cliffside restaurant. Uh, it is a local place, and we're going to have some uh, lunch. All right, Cliffside restaurant. Let's go check it out. Well, we have been sat. We're in the sun, it's a little bit warm. You picked the sun to take the Yeah, I really wanted this view while we eat of the city. But it might be a little bit too warm here, so we may be moving. Is this better, honey? Yeah, we moved here in the shade. It's still a pretty good view. But, uh, well, not as good, but not bad. He just brought us some complimentary bread. Are you going to try it? It's nice and warm. Huh? I'm not sure. I'm thinking about it. I'm going to take a bite of it. Let's see this butter. Looks like herb butter. Yeah, it is herb butter. It's really good. Our appetizer is here. We ordered coconut crusted shrimp. It comes with an orange horseradish sauce and orange slices. 
looks really good. And I actually tried a little bit of the sauce before I knew what it was, and I usually do not like horseradish, but I like this. Cause I, okay. Yeah. Well, let's give it a try. It does look good, doesn't it? Okay, what do you think, honey? They're really good. Really good, and it tastes really good dipped in that sauce, too. Yeah, that horseradish sauce is fantastic. Yeah, the horseradish is very subtle. Yeah, it's you can really taste the orange more than anything. Yes, you can taste the orange. The hint of horseradish. Uh, lots of coconut on the shrimp. You can really taste it. It's pretty fantastic. It's uh, fifteen dollars. Was what we're paying for it. Our entrees are here. Nicole ordered braised beef quesadillas. Wow. They look so good. Yeah. So bra slow braised beef. Uh, sauteed onions, bell peppers, arugula, salsa, uh, let's see, pickled red onions over rice with uh, roasted uh, corn and p uh, black bean salsa. Salsa, yes. yeah. With the cilantro lime ranch, which you probably won't eat that. No. That's quite the thing, isn't it? It's huge, and I'm definitely going to need a box. Yeah. Now, I ordered a. You ordered all healthy, and I feel shame. Yeah, usually. Nicole orders the salmon, but I got it this time. This is a sweet chili glazed salmon with mango salsa. Uh, that's coconut rice and seasonal vegetables. Looks like just green beans, huh? a little bit of corn. Anyway, mine is $22. Yours is $17. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, let's, let's give it a whirl. Yeah, we're going to need to go boxes. Okay, the verdict. Mine is delicious. Uh, lots of pineapple. The chili sauce is excellent. And uh, there's a, a, what was it, a white butter wine sauce. It all mixes together really well. You can taste the coconut and the rice. It's pretty fantastic. Good green beans and corn. Or I'm sorry, not corn. Carrots. I keep looking at these yellow things thinking corn, but that is pineapple. And that's carrots. Yeah. And the pineapple is plenty to get uh, pineapple in every bite of the salmon, which is awesome. Anyway, is it, is it really good salmon? these quesadillas are gigantic. They are, and but they're really, really good. They're really good. I mean, all the flavors go really well together. I love the, I love the, the red onion. I even like the spinach in it because when it's mixed with other things, I like spinach. Yeah. So the spinach, the red onion, the bell pepper, and of course the braised beef and. I'm sure there's a few other things in there. They, it goes really well together. Probably the best quesadillas I've ever had. Yeah, but you're only going to be able to eat one of those. Yes. Look at all huge. that we're going to have left, three of them. Uh, exactly. So leftovers, we'll be, that's what Definitely we'll be having leftovers. for dinner. Leftovers. Yeah, that's what we'll be having for dinner tomorrow night. I even tried, even though I don't usually do beans, I even tried the black bean and corn salsa, and I like it. Just because I know black beans are healthy, so I went ahead and gave it a try. And yeah. I even like that. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. And the coconut rice, of course. Very good. All in a restaurant that has this amazing view. We have our check. The tab is sixty-one ninety-six. That seems pretty cheap, <laughs> especially given how much food we got. Holy cow! Yeah, no, no alcohol makes a big difference. So anyway, yeah. So there you are, guys. Sixty-two dollars for this meal. We are at Thomas Judd's store, the oldest continuously operating store in town. I think it was a gas station even at one time. General merchandise store around the turn of the century, a little bit after. This building's over 100 years old. Anyway, it's mostly a candy store now from what I understand. Yeah, they got all kinds of soda flavors in here. And of course, lots of candy. I'm gonna get me some of these. I love these. And I want to get an Idaho Spud, too. Yeah, I used to eat these when I was young in Utah. The candy that made Idaho famous. Boise, Idaho. Don't you like these weird things? Yeah, I want one of those, too. For sure. All right, everyone, so that's the end of this video. We are going to Nevada, in the middle of nowhere, Nevada, middle part of the state, and we're going to stay at an old haunted hotel. Built around the turn of the century, 1900s. I bet you're going to be afraid. I'm going to be afraid, probably, but I'm still going to be looking for ghosts. Anyway, all that's coming up next, so be looking for those.